Also in our announcements this morning, Joseph has got an announcement that he wants to make known this morning. Stand up, Joseph. I got baptized. All right. Friday evening. Great. Also, uh, our business meeting will be coming up uh, August the 7th, selection of officers, and be here with us. Homecoming also will be coming up uh, the fourth Sunday in August, the 22nd, following our worship service. We'll be uh, planning for that. Also, there's some good writings in here this morning. And uh, Satan attempts to destroy the church. He's been doing that from the beginning of time. Destroy the human race. Take time to read those bulls with the good writings in there. Turn over here some chance. I had a senior moment in that Africa while I was flying over here. <laughs> now you know you all have that trouble these days. I want to commend our youth. I think uh, Friday they were here and helped mow on the ground some stuff. That's a good yeah. sign for the future. You turn to number 386. They were singing this song when Sue and I come into the church 60 years ago. Oh. Now something that old has to have some <coughs> spiritual strength behind it. I shall be satisfied when I awake 
in thy likeness. Psalms 17, 15. When my soul is singing in the the promised land of love, I'll be satisfied. Praising Christ the Savior for redeeming grace and love, I'll be satisfied.
Oh well. Have fun wherever you're at. Have fun. Number three hundred or three thirty-three will be a a prayer song this morning. And the Lord has answered a lot of prayers. It's right here in this little congregation. You have been through the ringer, some of you. And you've come out faithful and true to God. And that's the main thing. He never promised us a quiet, peaceful life. He said in this world, you will have tribulation. I expect it. That's part of it. It's not all about here. It's what we want to try to be when we close our eyes and we get into that rest that God has provided for us until He comes again. Is there spoken request from the congregation? Andy, I just like to say I, I'd like to see him be baptized by tonight. But also, Billy's oldest daughter, Kennedy, was baptized Saturday, not last night, but Saturday night before. So be keep us in prayers and keep the young converts in prayers if they can. That is always good news. When somebody finds the Lord, it's a blessing. It's a blessing. It was a blessing for me 60 years ago. My goodness. I don't know what kind of shape I'd have been in by now, even if I'd have been here by now. I'd like to have Jerry Brown and his family remember he's baptized now. And they've got a hospice party and they've got their flights there. They're going to pray for his wife and kids. And... Okay, Jerry Brown, preacher of the gospel. I've known Jerry a long time. We've talked and been together. We've done those things. But all of us, regardless of how our stature, time will catch us all. The big thing is, who catches us? And he, the Bible said, Blessed are those that die in the Lord. Yea, henceforth saith the Spirit, they do rest from their labors, and their works do what? Follow oh, they follow you. How good, a, how good a consolation that is. I'm telling you, there's nothing like being an old kind of Christian. Amen. Anybody else? Yeah, I remember Jerry. He's uh, pretty good. Jimmy. Jimmy? I like prayers for my sister in law. They have hospice with her now, too. Okay. And which one's that, Patty? Jimmy's wife. My brother Jimmy's wife. Jimmy's wife. Over in Wolf County. Mm -hmm. What's her name, huh? Lola Johnson. Okay. You want to try to maybe send him a card? This church is good for that. We've got a good card ministry. And until you need one, you might not know how valuable it is, but when you need a card, it just opens up a lot of things. But there's a lot of people that love you. There's a lot of people that love you. There's love in the people of God. We mean you no harm. I don't know why the world can't accept that. We're no threat to nobody. But I know the reason, too. Old scratch is behind me. The old devil. So we, we're trying to get her across. Somebody else. Jimmy? Yeah. Uh, in the bulletin, I put uh, Randall <laughs> Rose. And I don't know if there's anybody named Randall Rose. <laughs> I think we figured out it should be Randall Ross and Raymond Rose. Yes. So. Yeah. Rondo Reed, Reed. Reed. Okay, we still got it wrong. <laughs> Thank you, Dickie. Yeah, I think Dickie mentioned that last week. Yeah. Jimmy, I have family traveling today. Remember that? Tom's family that's on the move. Anytime, listen, people get scared to death for this COVID, and it's a bad thing. But why should that stand out any more than climbing your car and you drive five miles down the road in your history? Now, if you think about that, there should be no fear in the people of God. They come, what may. Now, I, you know, everybody handles things differently, but we get on a tangent. We get on one thing, and we're getting eat up by something else. Yeah. But your faith and trust in God. Did everybody say amen? Amen. All right. Jimmy. Hold up. Bobby. I've got family traveling this morning out to Tennessee. Y'all remember them? And I'd like to thank everybody for keeping me in their prayers. It's your help. 
That is a good testimony. I will remember them. And it's good to see you here. Bobby's been through a lot. That's what I'm saying. Our congregation went through a lot. It's still going through some. But the God we love and serve will take care of us. You need to know that for assured. Assured that he will. Jimmy, uh, Kingston's having some health issues. So remember him in your prayers this morning. Hey, Kingston. George's a little fella. I, and I was hurt to see a baby. Uh, a baby hurt and suffering concussion. A lot of times I can't tell you what's hurting him. But we're starting to keep him in prayer. Someone else? Give me that. Jackie at her. Jackie's bigger than you are. <laughs> Jackie used to kid he laugh when he'd be your little girl, Sierra. And Jackie would say, <laughs> but he's a, he's a big old boy down there. And a good kid. He's a good kid. All right. Anybody at Paul's co worker got to come home and Roger Lewis, that's your uncle, isn't he? Cousin. He used to live up here. Keep him in prayer. A lot of people facing a lot of things today. Be thankful to God that you're able to sit in the seat and sing praise and have a good time in the Lord. Amen? Amen. 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 All right. Jimmy. Yes. Yeah. Uh, I pray for my nephew, Roger Adkins. He's missed cancer bad. Okay. They've taken out an eye and he's got a cross in him. He's just been through a real bad time. Roger? Roger Adkins. Mm -hmm. Amen. Anyone else? Jimmy, I got a good doctor's report for Friday. Who? I went to a good, I got a good doctor's report for Friday. Ronnie? Yeah. Remember Ronnie? He's a good old faithful church going here and does a lot of different things. Got a doctor's point to keep him in prayer. I've, I've already seen him. him. I seen him last Friday. Oh, you saw him? Yeah. It worked out good. Yeah. All right. Jenny, if you'll remember Delma, I spoke with Dana this week, and he's ha also having some health issues. Of course, he won't tell you his own, but Delma's struggling really bad. She's real weak. She's not able to eat very much. She's getting real, real. She's got another week of radiation. She's going to have to go to Lexington for a few targeted radiation treatments, and then she may have to start chemo again. So she's got a long road ahead of her, but she's wearing down. Okay. Uh, Delma, Sue, uh, Amber worked with her. Sue works with her. And, uh, she's had a running battle. <coughs> and you don't know when you might have to start a running battle. But the okay. Lord loves you and you remember you. That's all parents. Anybody else? A prayer song this morning. Looking to Jesus, the author and the finisher of our faith. Hebrews 12, 2. Find a suit. We should have looked at these. <laughs> We've had a busy weekend. Uh, somebody find in the book, I Must Tell Jesus. We're, we just, we're just off kill for your place. 241. That's what we're going to say in 241. Yeah? Listen, this is not a song. This is a prayer. I must. 241. <clears throat> I must tell Jesus all of my trials. I cannot bear these burdens alone. In my distress. Kindly will help me. He ever loves and cares for his own. I'm a 
must tell Jesus. I must tell Jesus. I cannot bear my burdens alone. I must tell Jesus. I must tell Jesus. Jesus can help me. Jesus alone. I must tell Jesus. All of my troubles. He is a kind, compassionate friend. If I but ask Him, He will deliver. Make up my troubles quickly and end. I must tell Jesus. I must tell Jesus. I cannot bear my burden alone. I must tell Jesus. I must tell Jesus, Jesus can help me, Jesus alone. Kindled and cried, I need a great Savior, one who can help my burdens to bear. I must tell Jesus, I must tell Jesus, he all my cares and sorrows will share. I must tell Jesus, I must tell Jesus, I cannot bear my burdens alone. I must tell Jesus, I must tell Jesus, Jesus can help me, Jesus alone. Well, how the world to evil allures me, oh how my heart to sin. I must tell Jesus, and he will help me over the world, the victory to win. I must tell Jesus, I must tell Jesus, I cannot bear my burdens alone. I must tell Jesus, I must tell Jesus, Jesus can help me, Jesus alone. Good to see everybody this morning. Yeah, I want to use it. It's a beautiful crowd. It, it, it's, a, it's something out strong. There's a lot of spirit that you got this morning. I got, uh, got a little dolly out of Jim a while ago talking about that senior moment. We don't have those, do we? <laughs> yeah, we all do, but I have them. It's awesome, but sure is glad to see everybody this morning, and uh, we are, we're going to ask uh, Brother Dan if he will come and lead us in prayer. Let's pray. Lord, we're so thankful that we're able to be out here today, Lord, and we're thankful that we have this opportunity to come out and to praise you, to lift up your name, Lord, and to put you above all others. Lord, we are so thankful for the many blessings that we have. We're thankful that we have the health, that we have the strength to be able to be out here today. And we want to pray for those that are less fortunate, for those that are not able to be with us, for those that are sick and afflicted today, Lord. If it's if it's your will, Lord, we pray that you would heal their sickly bodies, and more importantly, Lord, that their sickly souls. We pray for all those that are lost out in sin today, Lord. We pray that they might hear your word and, and be obedient to that word. We pray, Lord, for this country that we live in. We pray, Lord, for the countries throughout the world. And uh, we always pray, Lord, that, that the leaders might look toward you for guidance in the decisions that they make that affect Lord, we, we pray for those that, that do so much great volunteer work in this country, the, the firefighters. And the, and I know everybody's not a volunteer, but many, many of them, doctors and nurses, the things that they do to help each and every one of us. School teachers, Lord, we're, we're so thankful that we have the people that can, can take care of us and, and help us with the needs that we have. Lord, we pray today, Lord, for uh, Brother Jim Frederick and, and Paul Jarvis, Lord, as they 
bring the word as they get your word out to us, Lord. We pray that, that it might be for our blessing, that it might lift us up, Lord, and make us stronger and closer to you. All these things we pray in Christ's name. Sunday morning, we take time to take of the communion service, which is the time to remember Jesus' sacrifice for us, how he sacrificed his own body, shed his own blood. We have the reading this morning. I'm going to read from 1 Corinthians 11 chapter, starting with uh, verse 23. For I received from the Lord, but I also passed on to you. The Lord Jesus, on the night he was to prayer. When he had given thanks, he broke it and said, This is my body, which is for you. Do this in remembrance of me. In the same way, after supper, he took the cup, saying, This cup is the new covenant in my blood. Do this whenever you drink it in remembrance of me. For whenever you eat this bread and drink this cup, you proclaim the Lord's death until he comes. We'll have a verse of another song. I'm not sure that prayer song wasn't meant to be the one we sung. That's a good one, wasn't it? Our uh, communion song, and, and we have open communion here. If, if you're a Christian, you want to take that, uh, you do so. You'd be more than welcome. Uh, that you do show the Lord's death until he comes. 1 Corinthians 11, verse 26. By Christ redeemed in Christ restored, we keep the supper of the
moments, I would love to you please raise your hand if you glad to serve. That's one of the hallmarks of, of our church. Give you, give you. First of all, if our members fall on hard times, we help them. We've got neighbors in trouble, we help them. Uh, there's a uh, children's uh, home in Bowling Green that we support. They take no federal money so they can teach. Disaster relief area. And she said everything was on there from a cooking stove to a couch and to a bed. And it was given to you. We may not need anything right now, but one of these days we might. I'd want somebody to love and care for me, wouldn't you? That's what we do. He died for all. They should not henceforth live unto themselves. Second Corinthians 5, verse 15. I gave my life for thee, my precious blood I shed, that thou might ransom me. Thank you. 
thee, what hast thou brought for me? me because there's a whole lot of scripture reading <clears throat> and uh, <clears throat> I'll have a very little bit of comments but mostly scripture reading. First Peter, the first chapter, in verse 19 says, but with the precious blood of Christ as of a lamb without blemish and without spot, who verily was foreordained before the foundation of the world, but was manifest in these last times for you. It was made known unto us these last times that Jesus Christ came and died on the cross of Calvary for our sins. He hung on the cross for us. He shed his life's giving blood. His body was broken on that tree for us. He shed his blood that we took just a moment ago that represents his death burial and resurrection. He loved us that much that God sent his own son to die for us. That it was preordained before the world ever existed that he will come and die for you and I. And I said earlier, if you've got a pen, if you've got a, a notepad, I want to bring to you the prophecies of the Messiah, which was fulfilled in Jesus Christ. He said that you might believe unto the salvation of your soul. Genesis 3.15 says, And I will put immunity between you, or between thee and the woman, and between thy seed and her seed, and it shall bruise thy head, and thou shalt bruise his heel. He was the seed of a woman. And you say, how is that? Well, Genesis, or, or Galatians 4.4 4 says, But when the fullness of time was come, God sent forth his Son, made of a woman, made under the law. Genesis 12.3 it also says that he is the seed of Abraham. He says, I will bless them that bless thee, and curse him that curseth thee, and in thee shall all the families of the earth be blessed. The fulfillment of that was in, is in Matthew 1 and 1. It says, The book of the generations of Jesus Christ, the son of David, the son of Abraham. I might not get, be able to get through this whole sermon, so it might be a two-part. But he's also, he's the seed of Isaac. Genesis chapter 17, verse 19, says, And God said, Sarah, thy wife, shall bear thee a son indeed. And thou shalt call his name Isaac, and I will establish my covenant with him for an everlasting covenant, and with his seed after him. And in Luke 3 34, which was the son of Jacob, which was the son of Isaac, which was the son of Abraham, which was the son of Terah, which was the son of Nahor. The lineage of Christ came through Abraham. He was also the seed of Jacob. Numbers 24, 17 says, I shall see him, but not now. I shall behold him, but not nigh. There shall come a star out of Jacob, 
and a scepter shall rise out of Israel and shall smite the corners of Moab and destroy all the children of Seth. And that was also fulfilled in Matthew chapter 1 verse 2. Abraham begat Isaac and Isaac begat Jacob and Jacob begat Judas and his brethren. also prophesied that he will come out of the tribe of Judah. And Genesis chapter 49 verse 10 says, The scepter shall not depart from Judah, nor a lawgiver from between his feet, until Shiloh come, and unto him shall the gathering of the people be. And in Luke chapter 30 verse 33 says, Which was the son of Benadad, which was the son of Ram, which was the son of Hezron, which was the son of Phares, which was the son of Judah. The word of God does not lie. Amen. People tries to twist the word of God to fit their own need. For whatever situation they're in, the word is the same yesterday, today, and forever. It changes not. If there's any changing, it's within you and I. Not God's word. It also says and prophesied that he will be the heir of the throne of David. In Isaiah chapter 9, <coughs> verse 7 says, Of the increase of his government and peace, there shall be no end upon the throne of David. And we know that David was a warrior of God. There was no peace while David was king of Israel. He fit battles continuously. It says, and upon his kingdom to order it and to establish it with judgment and with justice from henceforth even forever. The zeal of the Lord of hosts will perform this. And in Luke chapter 1, verse 32 and 33 says, he shall be great and shall be called the Son of the Highest. And the Lord God shall give unto him the throne of his father David. And he shall reign over the house of Jacob forever. And for his kingdom there shall be no end. God set up his kingdom. There is no end to God's kingdom. <coughs> if you have been baptized and repent for the sins that you've committed. You're in that kingdom. We're so grateful that Jacob, or that Joseph was baptized Friday night. Did he give his life to Christ? There's, the Bible says that there's more rejoicing in heaven over one sinner coming to repentance than 99 just that need us no repentance. But the angels are rejoicing that Joseph gave his life to Christ. We should also be thankful and rejoicing that he gave his life to Christ. There's happiness. There's peace. There's tranquility in the love of Christ. He also goes on and says that he was anointed and eternal. Psalm chapter 45, verse 6 and 7 says, Thy throne, O God, is forever and ever. The scepter of thy kingdom is a right scepter. Thou lovest righteousness and hatest wickedness. Therefore, God, thy God, hath anointed thee with the oil of gladness above thy fellow. And in Psalms 102, 25 through 27 says, Of old hast thou laid the foundation of the earth, and the heavens are the work of thy hands. Look about you. Things that's in the air, things that's going on, the creation that God has made. <coughs> if you can't see God, when you look around you, God is beautiful. God has created 
There's nothing that God created that <coughs> God created the heavens. He created the birds of the air, the trees. The breath that you breathe, He created it. He created you in His image. He goes on and says, They shall perish, but thou shalt endure. Yea, all of them shall wax old like a garment. All of these things are going to pass away. But my Christ, he will endure forever. It says, as a vesture shalt thou change them, and they shall be changed. But thou art the same, and thy, ear, and thy years have no end. Mm -hmm. Psalms 92 says, from everlasting to everlasting, thou art God. <coughs> Christ came to die for you and I. He gave his life up for us. He gave up the, the joys, the splendor of heaven to come and be born of a virgin Mary that we'll read about here shortly. He was treated crueler than any man was ever treated. treated. In Hebrews chapter one, eight through twelve, it says, But unto a, the Son of but unto the Son he saith, Thy throne is God, O God, is forever and ever, a scepter of righteousness is the scepter of thy kingdom. Thou hast lo loved righteousness and hated iniquity. Therefore God, even thy God, hath anointed thee with the oil of the gladness above thy fellows. And thou, Lord, in the beginning hast laid the foundation of the earth and the heavens are the works of thy hands. They shall perish but thou remainest and they shall wax old as doth a garment and as a vesture shalt thou fold them up and they shall be changed but thou art the same and thy years shall fill not. Jesus Christ is the same. There's no end to him. They have tried to destroy him. They're still trying today to destroy God. They're trying to destroy the Word of God. It also goes on to say that before he was going to be born there, over 700 years before the birth of Christ was prophesied, where he was going to be born that. Micah chapter 5 verse 2 says, But thou, Bethlehem, Ephraim, though thou be little among the thousands of Judah, yet out of thee shall he come forth unto me that is to be ruler in Israel, whose goings forth have been from of old, from everlasting. It was told by Micah, about 752 years before the birth of Christ, where he would be born. And then Luke chapter 2, starting verse 4, says, And Joseph also went up from Galilee out of the city of Nazareth into Judea, into the city of David, which is called Bethlehem, because he was of the house and lineage of David to be taxed with Mary, his espoused wife, being great with child. And she brought forth her firstborn son and wrapped him in the swaddling clothes and laid him in a manger, because there was no room for them in the inn. It was fulfilled in Bethlehem before Christ would be born. Be born of a virgin Mary. We read that a lot in, around Christmas time. It also says, fulfilled about the time of his birth. Who was in power? The Roman government was in, was in power at the time of Christ's birth. Daniel 9.25 says, Know therefore and understand that from the going forth of the commandment to restore and to build Jerusalem and to the Messiah, the prince shall be seven weeks and threescore and two weeks, 
The street shall be built again, and the wall, even the troublesome times. Jerusalem was rebuilt. It had been destroyed. In Luke chapter 2, verse 1 and 2 says, And it came to pass in those days that there went out a decree from Caesar Augustus that all the world should be taxed. And this taxing was first made when Cyrenius was governor of Syria. Goes on to say that prophesied that he will be born of a virgin. That's still about 740 years BC. It was prophes prophesied. Now look through the down through the history. If you're a history buff, you need to read in the Old Testament. That's a schoolmaster for you. The history of the Jewish people for our learning. What they went through. How that they were rebellious. They turned to God. They worshiped God for 40 years. They go into exile because of disobedience. They go into exiles for 70 years at a time. People today are rebellious to God's word. They're rebellious to the love that Christ has offered them. Isaiah chapter 4 verse 14 says, Therefore the Lord himself shall give you a sign Behold, a virgin shall conceive and bear a son, and shall call his name Emmanuel. And in Luke chapter 1, verse 26 to 27, it says, And in the sixth month the angel Gabriel was sent from God into a city of Galilee named Nazareth, to a virgin espoused to a man whose name was Joseph, of the house of David, and the virgin's name was Mary. Verse 30 and 31 of that chapter says, And the angel said unto her, Fear not, Mary, for thou hast found favor with God. And behold, thou shalt conceive in thy womb and bring forth a son, and shalt call his name Jesus. 740 years after this prophecy was made, Jesus Christ was born. came to this lonely earth sin laden world for our sins his purpose was to come and to die for you and I to shed his life giving blood on that tree and there's so many people at that time were slaughtered innocent people was prophesied again by Jeremiah. Look at our world today, how the innocent people are sacrificed. Innocent people's lives are taken from them because of sin. Jeremiah 31 15 says, Thus saith the Lord, a voice was heard in Ramah. Lamentations and bitter weeping. Rachel, weeping for her children, refused to be comforted for her children because they were not. They couldn't be comforted because they had taken their children. They had killed their children up to two years of age. Matthew chapter 2. 16 through 18 says, Then Herod, when he saw that he was mocked, the wise men, and was exceedingly wroth, and sent forth and slew all the children that were in Bethlehem and in all the coasts thereof, from two years old and under, according to the time which he had diligently inquired of the wise men. Then was fulfilled. <coughs> that which was spoken by Jeremiah the prophet, saying, In Ramah there was, there was a voice heard, lamentation and weeping. In great mourning, Rachel weeping for her children, and would not be comforted because they are not. <coughs> Every scripture in the Old Testament is referred back to the New Testament. They quote. 
correspond with one another. There is no contradiction between the Old Testament and the New Testament. People today try to contradict God's word every way that they can. <coughs> At this time, it was also prophesied that they would take their flight into Egypt. Because of the onset of slaughter that they were trying to kill Christ, here it was king at this time because he said that there would be a new king born. Hosea 11, chapter 1 says, When Israel was a child, then I loved him and called my son out of Egypt. The fulfillment of that was in Matthew chapter 2, 14 to 15. When he arose, he took the young child and his mother by night and departed into Egypt and was there until the death of Herod that it might be fulfilled which was spoken of the Lord by the prophet, saying, Out of Egypt have I called my son. They stayed in Egypt until the passing of Herod. When the threat was over, they came back to the land of Israel. Now there's a, there was a way prepared for Christ. God has prepared a way for you. He has prepared a way that you can escape the place that's called hell that's prepared for the devil and his angels. It wasn't prepared for you and I. But you will go there because of your unbelief, because of your disobedience, and because of the sin in your life that you commit. And the only way that you can escape that place is through and by the Lord Jesus Christ by accepting him as your Savior. Amen. The blood-bought salvation that he shed there on that tree for you and I. There he is the only way that you can get there. The Bible says that he that tried to climb up any other, any other way is the same as a thief and a robber. There is only one way and he is Nobody cares. Isaiah chapter 40, verse 3 through 5 says, The voice of him that crieth in the wilderness, Prepare ye the way of the Lord. Make straight in the desert a highway for our God. Every valley shall be exalted, and every mountain shall he every mountain and every hill shall be made low. And the crooked shall be made straight, and the rough places plain. And the glory of the Lord shall be revealed, and all the flesh shall see it together. For the mouth of the Lord hath spoken him. Isaiah wrote exactly what God wanted him to speak. This was fulfilled in Luke chapter 3, 3 through 6. And he came into the country about Jordan, preaching the baptism of repentance for the remission of sins. Talking about John here. John <coughs> prepared the way for Christ. That's John the Baptist. As it was written in the book of the words of Isaiah the prophet, saying, The voice of the one crying in the wilderness. John was crying in the wilderness. To say, preparing the way for the Lord. Make straight his path. Every valley shall be filled, and every mountain and hill shall be brought low. And the crooked shall be made straight, and the rough ways shall be made smooth. And all flesh shall see the salvation of God. Christ preceded the forerunner. This was John the Baptist. 
Malachi chapter 3 verse 1 says, Behold, I will send my messenger, and he shall prepare the way before me. And the Lord whom ye seek shall suddenly come to his temple, and the messenger of the covenant whom ye shall delight in, behold, he shall come, saith, saith the Lord of hosts. Luke chapter 7 and 24 says, And when the messenger of John were departed, he began to speak unto the people concerning John. What went ye out into the wilderness for to see? He said, what did you go out into the wilderness looking for? A reed shaking with the wind. This is he of whom it is written, Behold, I will send my messengers. Christ talking about John the Baptist. I will send my messengers before thy face, which shall prepare the way before thee. John the Baptist was about six months older than Christ. He was his cousin, which was Mary's cousin Elizabeth, was John's mother. He prepared and made the way for Christ. He was also preceded by Elijah. Malachi chapter 4, verse 5 through 6 says, Behold, I will send you Elijah, the prophet before the coming of the great and dreadful day of the Lord. John wasn't Elijah, but he was in the spirit of Elijah. And he shall turn the heart of the fathers to the children, and the heart of the children to their fathers, lest I come and smite the earth with a curse. The fulfillment of that was Matthew chapter 11. It says, for all the prophets, verse 13, 14 says, for all the prophets and the law prophesied until John. If ye will receive it, this is Elijah which was for to come. If you will receive it. You have to receive the word of God to believe it. You have to hear it. John was preaching that Jesus Christ would come after him. He said, whose light is on his shoes, he said, I'm not even worthy to unloose. God Almighty, Christ his Father, declared that he was his son. Prophesied in Psalm chapter 2. It says, I will declare the degree the Lord has sent unto me, Thou art my son, this day have I begotten thee. And this is after the baptism of Jesus Christ in Matthew chapter 3, verse 17. It says, And lo, a voice from heaven saying, This is my beloved son in whom I am well pleased. Christ did everything that was written about him. He obeyed God's commandments down to the T. There was no guile found in his mouth. He was obedient to every command that his father set forth for him to do. If he didn't, then the word of God isn't true. But it is true. And after his baptism, his ministry started in Galilee. Also again prophesied in Isaiah chapter 9, 1 and 2. Nevertheless, the dimness shall not be such as was in her vexation, when at the first he lightly afflicted the land of Zebulun and the land of Naphtali, and afterward did more grievously afflict her by the way of the sea beyond Jordan in Galilee of the nation. The people that walked in darkness have seen a great light. They that dwell in the land of the shadow of death, upon them hath a light shine. People walking around in darkness, in 
from their sins. The same as it was in this day and time. They are today. They're walking around in darkness. They're following the way of the world instead of the ways of Christ. Jesus Christ is the light. There is no darkness in him. Matthew chapter 4, verse 13 through 16 says, And leaving Nazareth, he came and dwelt in Capernaum, which is upon the sea coast and the borders of Zebulun and Naphtali, that it might be fulfilled which was spoken by Isaiah the prophet, saying, The land of Zebulun and the land of Naphtali by the way of the sea beyond Jordan, Galilee of the Gentiles. The people who sat in darkness saw great light. People are in darkness today because they don't have that great light. What is that great light? That great light is the love of Christ flowing in their hearts. That's right. You can't get that light unless you have been born again by the blood of the Lamb. Bible says that there's a way that seemeth right unto man, he said, but the end thereof is death. Is death. There's two roads that you can travel. There's a straight road and there's a narrow road. Straight, there's a wide path. Which road are you traveling today? Are you still in darkness? Have you <laughs> saw that light that Jesus Christ has offered you? It also goes on to say that Christ spoke to them in parables in his ministry. Psalms chapter 78, 2 through 4 says, I will open my mouth in a parable. I will utter dark sayings of old, which we have heard and known, and our fathers have told us. What did Moses tell the children of Israel? God told Moses to tell them, said, I want you to teach your children morning, night. When you get up in the morning, teach your children the Word of God. When you go to bed at night, teach them God's Word. <coughs> People are not doing that today. They've got every device that man has made known to you in their hands except the Word of God. <coughs> Those same devices are good in their own elements. But they put these things in front of God's holy word. He goes on to say, he said, We will not hide them from their children, showing to the generations to come the praises of the Lord and his strength and his wonderful works that he hath done. Matthew chapter 13, 34 and 35 says, All these things spoke Jesus unto the multitude in parables. And without a parable spake he not unto them, that it might be fulfilled which was spoken by the prophet, saying, I will open my mouth in parables. I will utter things which have been kept secret from the foundation of the world. Christ is making known to them things that have been kept secret from the foundation of the world. He's opening up to them, teaching the people, teaching the apostles what the Word of God is, what it means. Christ himself also was a prophet. How do you get that? Deuteronomy chapter 18 verse 15 says, The Lord thy God will raise up unto thee a prophet from the midst of thee of thy brethren like unto me unto him ye shall hearken. Who was speaking here? Moses was speaking this. Acts chapter 3, verse 20, 22 says, And he shall send Jesus Christ, which was be, which before was preached unto you. 
For Moses truly said unto the fathers, A prophet shall the Lord your God raise up unto you of your brethren, like unto me, him shall ye hear in all these things whatsoever he shall say unto you. Moses' ministry prophesied that Jesus Christ would come. Him, he said, you shall hear just as you hear me. Why did Christ come? One thing was that Christ sent him to heal the broken heart and to heal it. Isaiah chapter 61, verse 1 through 2 says, The Spirit of the Lord God is upon me, because the Lord hath anointed me to preach good tidings unto the meek. He has sent me to bind up the brokenhearted, to proclaim liberty to the captives, and to open the prisons to them that are bound, to proclaim the acceptable year of the Lord and the day of vengeance, of our God to comfort all that mourn. Luke chapter 4, verse 18 through 19 says, The Spirit of the Lord is upon me because he hath anointed me to preach the gospel to the poor. He hath sent me to heal the brokenhearted, to preach deliverance to the captives, and to recover of sight to the blind, to set at liberty them that are bruised. To preach the acceptable year of the Lord. He came to give you liberty. He came to set you free from the prison of sin that you're in. He came to take away the chains of sin that you're shackled to. By accepting him as your Lord and Savior. I'm going to stop here for this next uh, prophecy here. And it's in Isaiah chapter 53. Today, people are rejecting Christ on every hand. As Jimmy says that people are going to hell in a handbasket. Because of unbelief. They don't believe him that he's the son of God. They don't accept him, the gift that he has offered them. They don't accept the liberty that he can give them. They don't accept the freedom that he has offered them. They don't accept the eternal life that they can have through Jesus Christ, our Lord and Savior. <clears throat> but the people has rejected him. They've turned away from him. They've turned to everything except him. Christ. Isaiah chapter 53 and 3 says, He is despised and rejected of men, a man of sorrow, and acquainted with grief. And we hid it as it were our faces from him, and he was despised, and we esteemed him not. John 1 chapter 11 says, And he came unto his own, and his own received him not. His own people rejected him as the Messiah. <clears throat> Today, I pray and hope that you don't reject him as your Lord and Savior. Give your life to him. Confess your sins and to be baptized for the remission of sin. Not only that, but to rise again and walk in the newness of life. And to, you, you've also, you have to endure to the end. It's not simply being baptized and then sit down in your seat and doing nothing, but you, you have a job to do. You have work to do. You have an obligation when you become a Christian to worship God in spirit and in truth and to do unto others as you would have them do unto you. Luke chapter 23 and 18 in that prophecy says, And they cried out all at once, saying, Away with this man, and receive and release unto us Barabbas. People today are wanting everything except 
the Lord Jesus Christ. They want the pleasures of this world. It only endears for a short season. They can't look beyond that. They want happiness in the things that the world has to offer. When they should be looking for the happiness that Jesus Christ can give them. That happiness has to start from within. He puts a new heart within you. It's not the pumper that he's talking about. It's here. This is you. This is the heart right here. This heart here just pumps blood from one point to another. This up here is going to live on from eternity. Your conscience, your mind, your soul. That's you, not the heart. He loved you. He loved me. He died on that cross. He shed his life giving blood for us. But he was victorious over death, hell, and the grave. The grave could not hold him. He came victorious. The stone was rolled away the third day. You and I today, we can accept him as a Savior. We can continue, continually walk that straight on our road that leads from earth to glory. By serving him and doing the things that he bids us to do. To be a witness and a light for him. To those that are in darkness. Those that don't know the love of Christ. Be a lot. Be a beacon. Is that song we sang? Don't put your life under the bushes. Don't let your life go out. Not just here on Sundays, but out in the world. That's where people see you, is out in the world. What kind of life you live. That's where they see Christ in you, is out in the world. Amongst your friends. Your neighbor, your co workers. If you're staying safe. Number 632. This is something we all deal with. I dealt with it, every Christian's dealt with it. Time. Time. Today, if you will hear his voice, harden not your heart. Hebrews 3, verse 7 and 8. Oh, so love mine, be not alarmed at what the Lord may say.
there's time, time enough yet. Today, old friend, may be the last. Stop now and count the cost. You stand condemned before the throne. Your soul forever lost. Lost, lost, oh, what a cry from souls along the shore. In dark to go, in sorrow and woe, and be lost, lost evermore. I hope today that you got the, something out of the lesson today that you go back and to study God's Word and be informed <laughs> that God's Word is truth. You will never find a lie in God's Word, even though as hard as you try to search it, you will not find a lie in God's Word. It will stand when the world's on fire. It will stand when you and I are gone. It will endure. Christ comes back. He said, that that's it. Time is enough. He comes back to get his church, his children, his bride that he died Pay the price for. You be ready. Anyone else have anything this today? Uh, tonight at seven o'clock, youth youth group uh, here and on virtual. Uh, Wednesday night at seven here in virtual also. I think Brother Van has some new books for Wednesday night. Is that right? Uh, they won't start this Wednesday, but there are new books and uh, for the next, when we finish this last lesson in this one. Thankful for all the ones Saturday or Friday evening that uh, came and mowed the, the lawn. I'm sure it's a big uh, burden off the village shoulders. Kind of put it on, brought it on Dickie and Tom and all the rest of us, but that's fine. Billy's, Billy's put it to do anyway. Well, we won't Just start tonight time. virtually until 7.20. That gives the youth group time to have a few moments for, for their business, and then we'll start that virtually online at 7.20. 7.20 online uh, here in the building at 7. Anyone else? How much you dismiss us? Gracious Heavenly Father, we're thankful for another Lord's Day. Thankful for the scripture that we've heard today, dear Lord, and we know that uh, these things have come true, and we know there's still promises yet uh, that will come true sooner or later. We thank you for the word. We thank you for each and every soul that's gathered here today and for the fellowship we have with one another. And we just pray, dear Lord, that you go with us down through this week, that your line would shine through uh, our tabernacle, dear Lord, to others pray for those that are in need uh, of healing, those dear Heavenly Father that need company. We just pray for the lost, dear Heavenly Father, that before it's everlasting too late, they can see a need for Jesus Christ as their Savior. Of course, in his name we ask these things. Amen. 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 Get them all.